Welcome, welcome, welcome. What a joy it is to be here today. I love the Word of God. I love teaching it. I love everything about His Word. And I'm one of those who just believes it all. I believe Jonah was in a whale. I believe Noah built an ark. I believe Peter walked on water. I believe the Red Seas parted. I believe that Mary was a virgin. I believe his word from beginning to end. And I count on his word. I trust in his word. I believe his word. I speak his word. I declare his word. His word is infallible. His word is immeasurable. His word is truth. His word is light. His word is life. There is nothing more powerful on this earth than the word of God. And there's no better equipping that a saint of God can have than the word of God in their hearts. And that's where I'm going today. I have a message today called hiding and hoarding, hiding and hoarding. Now we know that the scriptures declare that we are to hide God's word in our heart so that we would have it there with us. I, I, one of, I've heard it said before, it was actually someone, on, a pastor on TV who said, I can't be in the word every day because of the way my life is. And I understand that. When you're in ministry, when you're in leadership, your days can get away from you in a heartbeat because of a phone call that comes in or needs that are around you. And what this person said was, I can't be in the word every day, but the word is in me every day. Gosh, I appreciated that because there are days where I cannot sit down and, and spend a lot of time reading his word. I can listen to it on the fly. I can uh, study it for Bible study, but that's different than my own personal time. It's the, it's, it would be easy to say, oh, I spend a lot of time in God's word. I do for ministry's sake. I spend a lot of time. This week, just this week, I'm teaching if you include the, the TV, because I'm actually taping two shows today, not just one. I usually do one a week, but I'm taping two today. Two shows, a Bible study for at my ministry, a Bible study at another ministry, and another Bible study at another ministry all this week, plus the message I did on the website. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six different messages this week. I've been in his word a lot. But for me personally to just sit at home and read his word for the sheer fellowship of being in his, in, in his word with God doesn't always happen. Those intimate times when it's just me and the word and God wanting nothing from it than to be with him and to fellowship him and to be intimately acquainted with his word just for me, that doesn't happen every day because of my life. But what I have today is a great message about hiding versus hoarding in our lives. Now, I'm not a big watcher of reality kind of shows at all. I'm more of the suspended reality kind of shows, you know, like the Perry Masons or the Gunsmokes or Murder, She Wrote, where things, you know, are not real. Um, they're, they're just made up. I, 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 when we go to movies, we like the singing donkeys and the talking birds as opposed to reality or the real life movies because, listen, real life is tough enough. And so I'm not used to watching a lot of reality TV, but I have watched or gl gone through and seen a little bit of a show called Hoarding. Again, I don't watch it, but I, I saw it. And this is what the Lord put into my spirit. It's that picture of hoarding that God wants us to speak to us about. Um, if, if only my life were like that show, and I'm going to show you why, that this has become such a, um, a, a vibrant picture in my heart. Um, if, if my life were as full of Jesus as those houses are full of stuff, what a greater life I would lead. And you're thinking, what in the world and why? Well, if I could like gather stuff around me, like prayer and wisdom and worship and praise and fellowship and obedience and love and trust and fellowship, if I can stuff that stuff all around my life, if I could just 
put it all around me so full. Can you, can you see the, the picture? Because if I had all of this stuff around me, there'd be just a narrow path to walk. So the word horde, this is a great word. The word horde is defined, and this is just Webster's. This is nothing spiritual. This is just Webster's. But there's such a spiritual connotation to it. Listen, the word horde is defined as a supply that is hidden or carefully guarded for preservation and future use. A supply, a, a supply that's hidden or carefully guarded carefully guarded for preservation for future use. Nowadays, hoarding has a negative concept, but we can use it for good. So we are told um, in 1 Peter that we are to sanctify the Lord in our hearts. Now, that word sanctify means to make holy, to set apart, or to make a place for Jesus in our hearts. In other words, we're commanded to set aside a place in our hearts solely for the Lord. In my heart, sanctify the Lord in my heart. And we're going to come back to that scripture in a second. So sanctify the Lord in my heart. Set aside a place just for him. It's more than just hiding the word. Like Psalm 119 verse 11 says, hide, your, hide, thy, hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God. That is powerful verse. Hide it so that you don't sin against God. But it's really more like hoarding that the scripture comes alive. When you get a picture of hoarding in your head, you see a room completely cluttered and overtaken with stuff. Only a small path can be navigated or negotiated. There is no way around all of the piles of, of all of the accumulated possessions around you. And, and just try to go and take those possessions away, take that stuff away. Hoarders are extremely defensive and emotionally passionate when someone comes to clean out the mess. I mean, they get angry and they, they react and they become violent at times. They cannot let go of their stuff. Well, there are many cleaning experts in our lives who want to come into this house. I am the house of the Lord, right? I'm the temple, I'm the house. This is me. And there are people or influences, cleaning experts, who want to come into our houses and try to carry away the priceless possession of Christ from us. Now, they don't use trash bags and Clorox or mops or dumpsters. They do so with things like mm, tradition or reasoning or doubt and false teachings or a simple denial of who Jesus is. Truly, they want to come and steal what I know. I, I, have, I have spent a lifetime... And I mean a lifetime. We have been a, a faith a family for, for as long as I, I remember. I was in church as a, as a small child. Now, I didn't understand salvation until I was in my late teens. But we loved God. And I have spent my life accumulating godly possessions, salvation, peace, self-control, love, Trust, um, mercy, grace, praise, worship, prayer, fellowship. I have accumulated so much Jesus stuff, and I love it. I love it. I love having so much Jesus in my life that this, this path that it leads me on <laughs> is an awesome path. I, I love this stuff. The stuff of God, not just his word, but his word is the, is the very basic of all of it. And if I hoard God's word in my heart, hoard his word, there are people and influences who want to take that out of me. They bristle at the confidence I have in his word. They come against the, the boldness that I have when I preach his word or preach and share the gospel. 
they come against the firmness of my beliefs and they want to try to take that stuff cleaning experts let me clean up your theology let me clean up what you believe let me take out the clutter that you've accumulated and put my own different clutter in that's not going to happen it is not, I am going to be as passionate about not letting Satan rob me of anything that I have accumulated in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing. I will fight to keep my friends and my ministry. I will fight to keep my, the word in me. I will not give up a Bible. I will not give up my time with him. Do you understand? We have to hoard God. Hoard him, not just hide him. Because here's how the world wants to come and steal it from us. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy 3, 5 says that there are some who have a form of godliness and then deny its power. And from such people, turn away. See, there are people out there that have a form of godliness and they want to come clean up my kind of godliness. Ain't going to happen. How about this one? Titus 1.16. Titus 1.16. They profess to know God, but in their works, they deny him. Being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. You see, they want to come and clean my house. I need to help them clean theirs. Mark 12.24. Jesus answered and said to them, Hey, are you not mis therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? See, we as believers know the scriptures and we know the power of God. We don't deny God's power or his godliness. We hoard everything about God. We, we, want, we want to hoard him. Why? Here's the verse that kicked it off for me. This is Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by in it, by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few that find it. See, I want to hoard the Lord because in my head, in my, in my mind, in my, 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 my heart, I see this picture of hoarders who only have a small path to navigate through their home. They can't detour to the left or to the right. They have this narrow negotiated path through which they can navigate only. They can go no other place but on this narrow path in their house. And God showed me, he said, Jenny, that's what I'm looking for for my believers, that they would have so much of me around them that they could not go anywhere but on the narrow path that leads to life through the one gate that's Jesus Christ. You see, when we get that picture in our head of hoarding Jesus, we, we, we live that narrow path. We don't detour to the right or to the left. We stay on the path that Jesus creates for us as we just let him fill all around us. That's why it's so important to fellowship together. I am surrounded, um, Hebrews says, by so great a cloud of witnesses who have gone on before me, but I'm also surrounded by so great a cloud of people in my life, believers, who keep me from going to the right or to the left and keep me on the narrow path. They see me if I would ever wander, which you know, I, 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 I don't. I mean, I, 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 I'm sure I've been tempted, uh, but I'm so full of Jesus that it would take a, <clears throat> something, something so horrendous for me to walk off the path that God has created for me. Why? Because I have friends that if they would ever see me lean to the left or to the right, they would pull me back on the path. They would, they would give me scripture. They would show me my, the error of my way, and they would bring me back to the path that leads only to God. This is is hoarding and we need more of it we need more of the recognition of who god is we need more of his word not less we, we we need fellowship we need to go to church we can't just sit at home and watch tv 
It's too easy to go to the right or to the left when you don't have people around you like that. I know it's COVID. I know it's pandemic. But I know Jesus. I know the healer. I know the protector. He says he's my shield and my buckler. And if I have to go to church and sit on the back row all by myself, I'm going to go to church and sit on the back row all by myself. Uh, when we were shut down, we were never shut down. But when it first hit a couple of years ago, and no one was allowed to go to churches, you know, and have more than 10 people at a church, we did it online for maybe six weeks. <clears throat> and then we decided, you know what, we're going to come back to fellowshipping together. But there was one woman from our church who would come in while we were, it was just the worship team and the, and the technical crew um, doing the services. But she would come in and sneak in the back door and just sit in a, in a chair toward the back just so she could be around the anointing and the flowing of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of believers. Now, she never, you know, came up and talked to us. We would see her and yell at her from the back. But she could not not, she could not not stay home. She just couldn't do it. She could not come. She could not not come. She had to come. We need more of that. We need more of hoarding, more of the fellowship, more of everything. Because if we don't remember who God is all the time, we will start to fall and falter. We have given so much power to COVID. I mean, we have given so much power to COVID that, we, that people literally say this. Are you ready? He died from COVID. I've heard believers give credit to a disease for the power of life and death. That a disease has the power of life and death. Disease does not have the power. They may have died with COVID, but they did not die from COVID. They died because God withheld their breath. And only God can determine who and when and at that moment. Period. But we have given so much authority and power to a disease. Folks, we can't do that any longer. This is not the God. It says that they have a form of godliness, but die, deny the power thereof. We need to, to get back to hoarding God. Going to church every time the doors are open. Fellowshipping as often as possible. Reading the Bible. Spending time in prayer. <clears throat> worshiping God. Praising God. Sharing the gospel. This is hoarding. <clears throat> And hoarding God in my heart leaves me a little path that would lead to destruction. It leaves only a narrow path that leads to him. Now that first Peter verse that said that we are to sanctify God in our hearts as Lord. This is important. Because it said he is, the, that word is curious, the Lord. He is the supreme authority. We're to make room in our heart for the Lord, the supreme authority, the power, the controller of all things. That is who we should be hoarding, not some watered down version of who the world says Jesus is, but the absolute power of the one who is in control of everything. Let, let me give you just one scripture, just one. To fill you a little bit. This is the God that we hoard. It's just a reminder. This is Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11. Therefore, mm, mm. God also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given Jesus, him, the name which is above every name. And that includes COVID and Omicron. That the name, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and of those who are in heaven and those on earth and those who are under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is who I hoard. I don't hoard some watered down lightweight gospel I hoard the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I hoard the power and authority of Jesus Christ. I don't surround myself with mamby, pamby, doubt, or could be, kind of might be. I surround myself with people who are full of the power and might of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is who I hoard. And this is what's around me.
Let, let me share with you an amazing description. I'm just, I'm going to warn you, I'm about to enable your hoarding. I'm about to be an enabler to your hoarding. Let me share this amazing description of Jesus by a man uh, who's long since gone to be with, with his Savior. His name is Dr. S.M. Lockridge. Um, he ama- was an amazing pastor, and this is probably one of the most powerful statements anyone has ever made about Jesus. You can YouTube, find it on YouTube. You can Google it, Dr. S.M. Lockridge. I have listened to it over and over and over through the years. When I just need hoarding, when I need to go buy more stuff about Jesus, when I need to go get something else to fill my atmosphere with Jesus, I will go to this. So let me just read you. It's not long. Let me just read you and let this hoard you. Let this be like a hoarding to you. He's the sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He is unique and unparalleled. He is unprecedented. He is supreme. He's preeminent. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy and the fundamental truth in theology and the cardinal necessity of religion. He's the miracle of the age. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and saves. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? He's my king. He's the king of knowledge, the wellspring of all wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance and the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness and the highway of holiness, the gateway of glory and the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors and the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislator and the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of the governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Do you know him? His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's indescribable. He's irresistible. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. The Pharisees hated him. The Jews rejected him. Pilate condemned him. The Romans crucified him and our sins killed him. The rich man buried him, but the grave could not hold him, and death could not handle him. And he rose triumphant on the third day, and he ascended into heaven, and he sits enthroned at the right hand of God. He is the Lord of heaven the Lord of the church, the Lord of our lives. He is our high priest in heaven. He is our king. He is our coming king. That's who Jesus is. Do you know him? Is he your king? Is he your Lord? That's hoarding Jesus. Those statements are powerful I mean, I feel the, the anointing all around right now in this room, in this studio. Right, I, I can sense the presence of God declaring him. I feel like he's like coming in close. He's, I, I'm hoarding him. And so when I hoard him like that, my path is very, very narrow. Enter by the narrow gate, Matthew 7.
Because the narrow gate is the one that leads to life. So what's this message about? Hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God, but hoard the Lord that you might not detour or stray. Can I remind you once again what the word hoard means? Because now you'll have a better understanding. Hear it, listen. It's a supply, hoarding, is a supply that is hidden or carefully, carefully guarded for preservation and future use. I may not need this today, what I just re read you from Dr. S.M. Lockridge, but I might need it tomorrow. And because I've hoarded it around my life today, it'll be there if I need it tomorrow. So what am I just trying to say to the church? Let's hoard. <laughs> Start hoarding. Start studying and reading and praying and singing and fellowshipping. Go to church when the doors are open, even when you don't want to, even when you're tired, even when there's too much to do. Drop it all and hoard the Lord because I'm afraid so many in the church have begun to hoard the world with activities and events and obligations outside of the church. Now, I'm not saying we cocoon ourselves. We live in this world, but we're not of it. And we're gaining possession after possession after possession, thinking that that's what we're supposed to do on this earth. It's not. We're not supposed to hoard the world. We're supposed to hoard the Lord. Amen? If you do not know this Jesus, you can't even begin to hoard him. If you would let us show you who this wonderful Savior is, we want to lead you to him. He is mighty, but he is so loving. His love is so beautiful, and it wants to draw you to himself. Call us at the office. Get online. Let us help you. He's painting this beautiful hoarded picture of his life with yours, one brushstroke at a time. Oh, God bless you, church. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brushstroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 260. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brushstroke at a time.